Samantha. Hi, Hi Lily. How, how are, are you? you? Oh, um, yes, I'm good. Thanks. Anyway, we I met you because of one of the transaction that we we outdated. I yeah. mean, my buyer. So, would you please share with my friends and and the audience how to win this bidding war in today's market in San Diego? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody knows that the real estate market has been crazy for, I mean, for many years now, right? With yep. low interest rates and not a lot of inventory out there. That's mm -hmm. really the biggest thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, there's just a lot of buyers out there and there's just not a lot of homes on the market. So, and we're seeing that, especially right now. Um, so really the way that you win, th that you win, that you win, yeah, win, <laughs> get your offer accepted is, um, you know, there's a lot of cash offers that are out there. Obviously those, like they always say, cash is king, right? But that's not necessarily true. Um, that's true. That's not necessarily true, right? I mm -hmm. mean, the, the, the sellers are going to get their money either way. Um, but so price is a big thing, but then also we know like communication with agents is a big deal. Like Lily, you mm -hmm. stood out to me, even though we didn't accept your offer, you stood out to me because you called me before and you were maintaining communication with me. So I knew you and we built that, we built like a trust, right? Yeah. And agents like to work with other agents that they, that they know and they trust. Yeah. So that's a big deal. So if you are a real estate agent out there and if you're trying to negotiate, a transaction for your clients make sure that you're talking to the agents a lot don't feel like you're bothering them just you want to be really clear about your intention that your clients really really want the property so price you know your agent is a really big deal right making sure that they're maintaining communication with the other agents and then terms so the shorter a lot of sellers some sellers want shorter escrow some sellers don't some sellers yeah. don't so getting really clear on whether or not the sellers would like a 21 day escrow, a 30 day escrow, uh, or if they'd like what's called a rent back, meaning they can stay in the property after the close of escrow. We did one today for free. Yeah. See, that's right. For free. Yeah. So they can stay in the property for free after, after the new owners are owners basically. So they're, yes. so that's a big thing. Um, and then terms, right? So there's three contingencies that are in the, that are in an offer. Yeah. We have the inspection loan. contingency, and loan, contingency. loan and the appraisal. Yeah. Now, a lot of offers that are getting ex accepted are removing the appraisal contingency altogether. And if you are using a loan and what that's telling the seller is you're telling the seller that, Hey, should the appraisal come in a little bit less than what the, the seller or what the buyer is willing to purchase it for, then we'll pay whatever the amount is over the appraised price because appraisers go off like the comparable sales that just sold. And sometimes if someone's willing to pay like $200,000 over asking, it's going to be hard for the appraiser to find a comp to match that. So I have transactions that it's over half a million dollars. Yeah, over asking, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's normal. I mean, well, that's not that normal, but that's oh, if you we hear about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's um, usually most properties are going for at least ten to twelve percent over asking right now. Yeah. Um. So just be prepared for that. Uh, that's again, that's like a really normal thing that's happening right now. And yeah, so removing the appraisal contingency, if you could remove the loan contingency altogether, that'd be awesome. Talk to your, um, to your lender, make sure that they can, you know, that they either fully underwrite your loan. So everything looks good there, removing that. And then if you can just buy the property as is, I mean, I'll always do a home inspection to check the condition of the property, but either remove the uh, physical investigation or inspection contingency, meaning you're basically buying the property as is, you're not gonna ask for any repairs. Um, you know, so as much of those contingencies that you can remove, the greater the chances that you have of, um, of getting your offer accepted yeah. because sellers know that they have leverage and that they can get the offer where basically people just want to buy it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And there's no inventory. And yeah. I have one this morning. I need to prepare shortly after there will be no contingency and, um, no inspection. We just buy it as is. Yeah. And. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm sure that you're gonna get that for accepted if you're. It's already it. accepted. I just need to get uh, all the party signed. Yeah, and then we will open the score today. Well, congrats. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. But thank you so much, Samantha. And, you're welcome. And, 
one one more thing. How did you select the offer? You know, we outbid. My client yeah. lost the lost the bid. Yeah. So, so that deal, what happened? Yeah. So on, on this condo that we recently listed in Putnam, we had sixteen offers, and I had a lot of really great offers and some great agents, just like Lily, who submitted on the on the mm -hmm. property. And we lost. And, yeah. So basically, they came in eighty thousand dollars over asking, and they removed all contingencies up front. So no inspection, no loan, no appraisal. The buyer also paid for their own home warranty, which saves the the seller like four fifty. Yeah, like not very much, but it's like little things here and there. Yeah. Um. You know, just yeah. So that that was basically the the big thing. So, okay. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Thank <Lily>. you. <laughs> Bye.